I'm Joanne Banco, author and online educator at Let's Go Sew. One of my favorite, favorite, favorite things to make and to wear are wraps. They're great for all different types of climate changes. They really make a fashion statement too. So in my book, I've actually created nine machine embroidered wraps that you can wear. But today I wanna to show you another variation, a special version, a three-way wrap that you can make from sweater knit. So let's take a look at the samples here in the dress forms. First you see the one actually created for the book, which is made from a, a lightweight suede fabric and has embroidery on it. That's a whole different ball game, but it's still basically the same style with um, buttons, and those buttons allow you to wear it a variety of different ways. So let's talk about my variation for today, which is made from sweater knit. I've got a little bit of a heavier sweater knit and then a very, very lightweight one. So let me walk you through the steps for that. First of all, you're gonna start with the custom pattern that I created. I'll give you all the measurements in the, in the um, download with the directions. And we've got a one long, large rectangle. That's gonna be the top side and the back side of the wrap. And then we've got smaller rectangles that we're gonna join at the ends. And there's a very specific reason for that. We don't wanna to have to stitch a buttonhole on here. A traditional buttonhole would not work real well on the fabric and it really wouldn't look very pretty. So I designed this with a simple opening that's gonna create the buttonhole. You'll see that when I actually stitch it at the machine. So I wanna make sure I mark that on my pattern, the buttonhole opening, I don't wanna forget that. And then I'm going to cut two more, the smaller rectangles that are gonna form the bands at the bottom. And you can do that two ways. I've got one here that's the same measurement, but I cut this on a fold line. That's actually the one I used on my white wrap because you see this is a very thin sheer fabric and I didn't want my seam allowance to show through on that edge. But to economize on fabric, I've got another pattern variation and that one is basically the exact same size but instead of having a fold, I would have a seam here. So my patterns are very clearly marked. You need two of the large rectangles, you need two of the smaller end pieces if you're doing it on the fold but if you're doing it with a seam, you need four pieces. So that's what I did on the, the black one here. You can't see through this, but right along here is the seam allowance. So like I said, that just allows you to economize on fabric a little bit. When you cut with a seam, you can move that piece around a little bit. So let's talk about the, the fabric itself. Sweater knit, you're gonna find all kinds of variations. You basically wanna look for sweater knit that is a lightweight sweater knit. That's gonna be important for the drapeability of this. It's also gonna be important for um, turning this right side out, which you'll see that in a minute too. So the most important part that you need to start with after you've cut the pattern is stabilizing it. And I recommend a very lightweight Trico fusible interfacing. And I'm gonna fuse that to each of the four pieces where I have that, um, that cut edge that's gonna join to my larger rectangle. So again, you'll see that in, in just a minute. But I like to cut these, first of all, a great tip is to cut them, you want three quarter of an inch wide, and I like to use pinking shears because that allows it to blend into the edge. You don't even notice the fusible stabilizer that I have in this, in this seam here. But look at how firm and nice that makes it because we don't want that to stretch out. It's okay if it stretches everywhere else, that's gonna be great for comfort, but we don't want that seam to stretch. So I have fused that to here, and I wanna show you that. And I want you to see how stable that is. Look at that, I used a contrast. Naturally, I would use a light color for light fabric, darker color for darker fabric. And I wanna cut that along the straight grain. Fusible Trico interfacing has very little to no stretch along the lengthwise grain. Crosswise grain has a little bit more stretch. My fabric has crosswise stretch along the crosswise grain. So I'm going to cut the strips on the lengthwise and then when I fuse them to the crosswise, it's gonna keep that from stretching out. Has another big added benefit. Take a look at this other edge and look how that's curling. That's because this is a jersey style knit and that helps tame it very, very, very well. So let's get rid of all this, move this out of the way so that I can spread out my pattern a little bit, or my 
piece that I've already stitched and show you how that, how that goes. All right, so here I've got my two very large rectangles. I've got this all pinned, but I'm just gonna pull this out so that you can see this. And then this was the band piece, which is that smaller rectangle that was cut on the fold. And I've got all four of those edges stabilized with that fusible Trico interfacing. You could tell by the fact that I can't stretch. So each one of those shorter cut edges are stabilized with the fusible Trico. So you're gonna need um, eight pieces of that. And then you pin that seam there, you pin your second seam here, and that's gonna be my band for that end. I've got the exact same thing on this opposite end. Okay, so you can see that's exactly the same thing. But you're gonna see in a second here, I've also marked off an opening for my buttonhole. So let's slide that one aside, and I'll pull this one out that I've already stitched for you. So where those edges were pinned, I have now sewn the seam. I've also you know, done every single edge there, but I've also carefully marked off an opening for the buttonhole. Now the buttonhole needs to match the size of your button. I think the perfect size for this is an inch and three quarters. You can find some really pretty decorative buttons like that, or choose a, a plain one to just blend in. It's your choice. So I've marked off that buttonhole opening. It needs to match on that opposite side where the band was sewn to that second seam. And then I want to show this, and actually um, show you a little uh, trick here. When I try to match those seams for sewing my side seams, which are going to be the last thing that I sew, I like to use this crisscross effect with my pins. But for now, I'm going to pull these out. Because I want to show you one more step before I actually created the, um, the seams to, to form the wrap. I want to top stitch each one of those seams. So I just used a really close stitch that makes that lay flat. Again, you can see that on the one that's on the dress form. I'm gonna unbutton this really quick so that you could see what else that does. That creates that nice, smooth opening for your buttonhole. I will take one more step when I totally finish that, and that is to just tack each one of those um, ends down with another little just short top stitch. But you could see that, I mean, I could actually stick my finger in there. But that, remember, the most important part is to make that correspond so that you're, you have that buttonhole on both sides of that band, okay? All right, so I've already got one of these se side seams sewn. Let's head over to the machine and we'll finish up this other side. Sweater knit can be a little bit on the flippy floppy side when you're, when you're sewing with it. So a couple more tips for you. Be um, careful when you're handling your fabric. When you cut it out, make sure that you've got that laid flat across a table so you don't have any fabric hanging down so it doesn't stretch out. When you're pinning, when you're handling it, as much as possible, it's a good idea to do that right at a, a, a table so that you can leave everything nice and smooth. I'm going to use a, a half inch seam allowance. I'm also going to be very careful that I don't um, uh, make that too um, bulky at the end. Lower my presser foot here. Oh, it wants me to lower that with the button. OK, I'll do whatever the machine tells me to do. So I'm going to take those first few stitches, and I'm going to actually stop, and I'm going to pivot just slightly instead of back stitching so we don't have too much of a tangled mess there at the end. Another option would be to tie off those stitches by hand. I do that a lot. You know, it just gives you a nice, smooth, smooth finish. So I'm gonna sew all the way along this. I'm using a half inch seam allowance. You could use a quarter, you could use five eighths. You know, the width of this wrap and even the length of it can be easily customized to your own desires. If you need a little more coverage, fine. Um, you can just add a little bit of width. You can add a little bit of length. So you can feel free to customize my measurements. If you're um, average or petite height, um, this should be a good, a good size for you. But again, you can customize that as well. So 
Make any size you want. So I've got a nice long seam. I don't have any trouble sewing this, but again, be careful that you don't stretch that out. I would normally use more pins. I'm a pinning person. I like to uh, really put a lot of pins in when I'm sewing. I don't mind taking them out. I don't mind putting them in, and that way I don't have the chance of having to rip those stitches out. If you get a little bit of an uneven edge, you could finish um, that up by just uh, trimming it. So again, it's pretty forgiving. Make sure that you um, don't stretch out your fabric when you're pressing it. Use a gentle hand is basically what you're doing. And just be careful so that you keep that um, fabric from getting distorted. I always say, you know, with, with when you're sewing, kind of treat your fabric and your piece like it's a baby, so. All right, I'm gonna backstitch that. I'm gonna cut that off. All right, in the second here, you're gonna see my buttonholes. You're gonna see the opening. Let me find which side. You just want one end. Only one end has to have those buttonholes, so there it is. There's my buttonhole opening on that side, going all the way through. This fabric is so fine and so light, believe it or not, I can turn it right side out through this buttonhole. And I also did that with my black one as well. Now, your sweater knit may not be like that. So if you are not able to do this, then you wanna leave just a little bit of an opening along that, la that long side seam so that you can um, uh, pull your whole wrap through and then uh, just close up that opening when you're done. So that's exactly how I turned that. So let me show you the finished wrap here. I've got um, the buttonhole opening there where I turned that. I can button right down here at the waist. I can go up another button all the way to the shoulder. Any way you like it, you can make a beautiful machine embroidered wrap or one from sweater knit.